up to the organ. You can see right here. So that's how I do that in the shows. I'll have like my key main keyboard and then I can bring in the organ over it and do the same thing with the organ. Tell that swell the start of false alarms? Yeah, exactly. That's how we do that is by me. And the other guys do a similar thing on their end. very conscious thing on this album that we are being more willing to write songs that have a more loop based vibe. I mean, False Alarms, literally the first lyric is, it's been a while since I went and wrote a song like this, take a good four chords and let it loop as is. It's also a commentary on our battle to make a sustainable career for ourselves in a really complicated and tenuous industry. When you're a kid dreaming of being a musician, playing shows to a lot of people all around the world, like, that's the dream. And I think obviously you get older and like money comes into play. And I think being in a band of eight people, you're just obviously gonna always be making way less money than other artists at the same size. Our fans are surprised by how much attention we need to pay to every single dollar in order to make ends meet on a tour. I think the passion for me is more in trying to be a band that people think of as like, we're doing it ourselves. We didn't just sign a deal so we could show up and just play music. When people think about touring, they think about the onstage moments, you know, partying after the show, or whatever they might think of. So much of tour is really about those little moments backstage in the green room. We're gonna be eating hummus together a whole lot. Figuring out what food you're gonna order. I'd like to place an order for pickup, please. Uh, one you can. Asesino, for Bust out the Spanish. Talking about the logistics. I don't necessarily have a plan for how we're going to get this. Someone's going to need to run out. It could be me. It's going to be you. In the case of me and Jordan, so much of it is talking about the deals that we're going over for each show. What are you doing? It's just looking at how fucking terrible all these deals are. This industry is just so fucked up. Well, she came down and she's like, yeah, their old LD was just nowhere to be found. So I was like, I guess I'll do it. How the nails harsh. I think it's going to be a great look. Like the show tonight, they're charging us for tons of stuff that they're not providing. I don't really know what to do, but like, just looking at these deals night, night after night, I mean, we're, we're making some money, but the promoters were doing nothing. Make more money than us every night. When we started writing false alarms, we were writing about all these frustrations right at a moment that we were starting this collaboration with an artist who we really love, John Bellion. And I, th I don't even remember whose idea it was for him to do a featured verse on the song. He was so passionate about the issues and then he just delivered us his verse sure you keep your in full exactly as it is on the record. Fame is overrated and live nations a monopoly. And I was literally just like, yeah, that's it. With the royalties and hype is something someone needs when fans can't give you loyalty. This is the most amazing thing I've ever heard. Some point, no, I say it in my interviews. Did, did you ever think when you were writing that verse that it would explode into what it has? Bro, <laughs> it was such a lesson for me to be like, when you're speaking your truth or you're saying something that is like somewhat against the grain or whatever, just be prepared to like back it up. So it's easy for me to be like, Live Nation's a monopoly. I've been through this too, check it out. These are the things I'm not afraid to say and then it just so happens that you fast forward <laughs> a year and you guys are talking before the Senate. The tickets were listed at $30 and our pay ended up shaking out to about $12 of each ticket. The fan paid $42 because Ticketmaster tacked on a 40% fee. But whereas Live Nation's costs were already covered at this point in the calculation, we still need to pay for our touring costs. So that leaves us with $6 for an eight-piece band, pre-tax, and we also have to pay our own health insurance. Why are your people not doing their job? Well, I don't know, I've been down here. Why are you down here? Like, what are you doing? Our band showed up 20 minutes in the set. Would you pay us our full rate? I don't know if they're supposed to be so glossy. Do you know if these are supposed to be really shiny or like different? Don't fucking go to music. Yes. <laughs> they're charging us on these deals for crew members that aren't here. Like, 
They're charging us $500 for the production manager. There's no production manager here. Little things like that adding up to thousands of dollars every night that they're cheating us out of. Anyway, I'm going to put on different. I'm a little crazy, but that's okay. Sometimes in order to fix things, you should have to put more shit on it so that it looks more intentionally crazy. I'd be worried about him hearing me, but he's probably not here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, like, thank God I wasn't like a raging lunatic because my stomach was like, something's wrong, something's wrong, get out, you know? I can't really explain to you why this is fucked up, but I really feel like it is. I'm gonna just listen. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Yeah. You know what? Live Nation's a monopoly. And you guys are like, I really have to credit Jordan a lot. Like Jordan is someone who is like dead set on like changing the system. Nothing keeps Jordan up at night more than like feeling like he got screwed. And this industry is trying to screw you at every turn. And Jordan is someone that does not let that stuff slide. I think like Jordan's feeling of like, this person's trying to screw me, and my feeling of like, this person is not doing as good a job as we would do ourselves, ends with like, me and Jordan being like, let's do it ourselves. It's crazy. Part of the thing that like, continues to drive me is the feeling that we haven't made it. And it's like, what can we do to make it? My definition of success is just being able to make the music that I want to make and make a decent living for me and everyone involved in the band. I will feel like I've made it when we're able to perform shows in equitable ways, ways that are just like us playing a show and not being this small little cog in the giant live music wheel. Johnny Cohen, Jordan Cohen. And very fortunately for us, we have a wonderful rapper right here in the band, and his name is Mark freaking Lang. Give it up for Mark, come on! Well, Clyde and Gracie sent this song across my desk, and then they asked if I could shine some light. They hold a deer like venison. I'm not no Edison, my club don't got no membership, but I could use my penmanship to drop a couple gems and shit. My pride's could put some nuggets in my old age A couple grains of salt, I got some Goya and some Old Bay I wrote a couple hits on the piano in my foyer Labels try to holler for my friends I tell them, oi, make sure you keep your mask just so these assholes don't get shopping sprees Fame is overrated and my patience a monopoly Don't ever stress the credits if your check comes with the royalties And hype is something someone needs when fans can't give you loyalty Every mistake I made is like an institute Not to be the 2.0 away from touring because it was such a shit show. So a song like False Alarms is like, wow, it's so cool to see a band that understands it and gets it and can fight the proper fight with the right knowledge because if I got screwed over from the horrible way that that system is set up, imagine since the beginning of music. freckles above my knee and it represented to me this weird part of my body that I was like so embarrassed by and then John just kind of screamed in the background like you know you're beautiful you know you're beautiful so out of nowhere we had this like viral-ish moment on TikTok a question I get asked a lot is what is it like to be the only girl in the band no one's commenting on our music videos like whether you know Clyde is like pretty or not. In general, what's it like to be a woman in the music industry? One, two, 